Now, let's hear from the AE 911 Truth professional petition signers who will share with you what conclusions they came to. Among these experts are high-rise architects and engineers in the fields of structural design, materials science, chemistry, fire protection, metallurgy, as well as physicists, explosives experts, and demolition technicians. Joining them will be firefighters who support our call for a new World Trade Center investigation. I don't want to be involved in conspiracy theories. I, you know, there are lots of them that can go on. We can speculate on that forever. What we really need to know is how, how those buildings came down. The new World Trade Center, Building 7, looms above the site of its original. Building 7 was a 47-story high-rise, not hit by an airplane. Yet, it was the third modern steel-frame skyscraper to collapse rapidly and symmetrically on 9-11. It was a football field away from the North Tower and sustained minor damage from the falling debris. Building 7's precipitous collapse was blamed on normal office fires. I'm Kamal Obeid. I have a master's degree in civil and structural engineering from the University of California at Berkeley. I've been a practicing engineer for the last 30 years. Building 7 to me is, is really what gives it away because that's a classic case of controlled demolition. My name is Stephen Dustewald. I'm a licensed professional structural engineer with 37 years of experience in the structural field. I have 25 years of experience as owner and principal of my own structural engineering firm here in Las Vegas. I have focused on nuclear power plant design, large commercial and industrial buildings. I first became aware of the problems with the official account of the collapse when I saw a, a DVD online uh, from Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Uh, they pointed out various problems with the official story and uh, the ones that caught my attention were the rapid failure of the connections uh, in order for the building to come down at the rate that it did. My name is Casey Pfeiffer. I am a registered professional structural engineer in San Diego, California. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in civil engineering at the University of Notre Dame. I have been practicing engineering for 15 years and currently I am the principal of Pacific Coast Structural Engineering in San Diego, California. A friend of mine gave me a Blueprint for 9-11 Truth DVD to review and from that the evidence that I saw was so compelling that I, it became obvious that the official story was not correct. I'm William Rice. I worked for one of the nation's largest design-build construction firms uh, on commercial and industrial and institutional projects uh, in Boston, New York, uh, Philadelphia, and Baltimore areas. As a professor, I taught um, engineering materials, structures lab, and other building-related courses at Vermont Technical College to architectural and engineering students for 20 years. I watched Building 7 fall at an accelerating rate in six and a half seconds. This was a massive 47-story structure. The only way that a building can accelerate as it collapses is by having pre-engineered, precisely timed and precisely placed explosives. In other words, controlled demolition. My name is David Topete. I have a Master's of Science degree in Civil Engineering. I am a licensed structural engineer. I design new structures and retrofit existing structures uh, from concrete or masonry or structural steel. In my professional opinion, in my experience, for World Trade Center 7-2 collapse straight down upon itself as video indicates as everything that we've witnessed, the, the supports at the center essentially all had to be taken out at once. I certainly believe that it had to have been controlled demolition, controlled charges, explosives, something of that type, because it was a sudden failure. I'm Dr. Bob Bowman, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Air Force, retired. 
flew 101 combat missions in Vietnam, directed all the Star Wars programs under Presidents Ford and Carter. My PhD is in aeronautics and nuclear engineering from Caltech. I did postdoctoral work at the von Karman Institute in Brussels, Belgium in finite element analysis. I taught at five universities and colleges uh, serving as department head and assistant dean. The coup de grace for me was when I found out that Building 7 had collapsed later that day and when I saw Building 7 come down. Uh, to me, Building 7, the fact that it looks like a, a perfect controlled demolition of an intact building with no visible fires. I mean, that's what I call a smoking gun. Uh, my name is Robert McCoy. I'm an architect. I have a Bachelor of Architecture from the University of California in Berkeley in 1963. Been licensed in California since about 1964. From about 1965 until about 1985, my, most of my experience has been in a high-rise, multi-story steel buildings. NIST would have us to believe that, that, that these were, was a typical office fire, scattered office fires, if you will, that brought this building down. Since the mid-60s, I've tried to follow high-rise fires because they're something we worry a lot about as we design these buildings. And, and I'm not aware of any high-rise building that have come down as a result of fires. I can't remember even a partial collapse in any of these buildings that I've watched over the years. I'm Steve Barish, uh, founder and president of Barish Architects and Associates, Inc., a 33-year-old architecture planning and engineering firm. We have offices in uh, San Luis Obispo and Pasadena, California. Uh, I hold a, a Bachelor of Architecture degree from the University of Arizona and a Master's of Architecture and Urban Design from Rice University in Houston, Texas. Spent three years in London as the first PhD student at the Architectural Association. One of the things that, that really interested me is how quickly the Tower 7 fell. It fell within seven seconds approximately from top to bottom. Um, this building was built in the mid 80s apparently and uh, met all the known codes at the time. Uh, buildings just don't behave like that. My name is Les Young. I'm a licensed architect in both New York State and in California. Uh, I've been involved in many large projects, including uh, overseeing several high-rise buildings ranging in size from 14 stories to 40. Uh, over the course of 20 years, I'm mainly called in to help with very large, difficult projects. When I watched Building 7 collapse, it basically left no doubt in my mind that something was wrong. Um, Building 7 had not been hit by a plane. To me, it was obvious that there was some controlled demolition and some explosions involved. Was the structural steel from World Trade Center 7 preserved, documented, analyzed, according to standard procedures for investigating engineering failures? It was really clear from the beginning that there was this great move to as quickly as possible get rid of all of the rubble and move it off. Because what they did immediately after 9-11 was they started removing the steel, the, the debris from Tower 7 and all the towers immediately. They sent it off to, to China to be recycled. Quickly and rapidly they were destroying the uh, structural steel. The steel was uh hauled away and, and melted down before it could be analyzed. It was already being carted away and, and destroyed when the FEMA investigators got there about uh, a month after September 11th. It was being melted down, it was being cut up into pieces so that no real thorough investigation could happen. Um, and that, that's, that in itself is a crime and that kind of thing needs to be investigated. The steel was picked up and carted away before anybody got a good look at it. And uh, the destruction of evidence was uh, a criminal act in itself. It would have answered a lot of questions that we can't answer because we don't have the uh, structural steel to examine.
there were laws violated in the uh, destruction of that evidence. And for the American Society of Civil Engineers to ignore those events is extremely disturbing and uh, is a violation, in my opinion, of their professional code of ethics. It was contrary to the way all investigations are done. If, if an airplane crashes, they seal off the entire area, nobody touches anything, they move it to a, to a secure location and they, uh, and they reconstruct an aircraft. Normally, uh, when you have a structural failure, uh, you carefully go through the debris field, uh, looking at each item, photographing every beam as it collapsed and every uh, uh, column where it is in the ground, and you pick them up very carefully and you uh, look at each element. We were unable to do that in the case of Tower 7. Aside from this one small piece that was found to have intergranular melting, incredibly, none of the steel, none of the other steel from World Trade Center 7 was saved for analysis. This is disconcerting, considering World Trade Center 7 would have been the first steel frame high-rise building in history to ostensibly collapse due to fire. The government has destroyed much of the evidence but there's still some evidence available in photographs of the evidence. My name is Lynn Margulis. I've been doing science every day since I was about 16 years old. I teach at the University of Massachusetts. I have a PhD in genetics. I reconstruct the past natural history from clues taken to be representational, and that's exactly what we're doing with reconstructing of why the buildings were destroyed in 9-11. In the historical science, that's what must be done. And I received the Da Vinci Award, that is the membership in the Da Vinci Society. You can't do science when you are deprived of the evidence and when your hypothesis is the least valid instead of the most likely. When the most likely hypothesis in, in the case of Building 7 wasn't even mentioned, uh, this is not science, so the claim is that it's something else. It's trying to prove preconceived ideas.